So in my last episode review, I had mentioned that there is no good reason for Goku and Vegeta to not be using their SSG SS forms, to which then everyone and their goddamn mother took the time to comment to me to tell me, no, they give a reason. It's because they're worried about Hit. They're holding back because of Hit. Okay, first off, let me just go ahead and state that unlike the majority of people uh, in this community who do these reviews, I actually do wait for goddamn subs. I wait for subs, and if the subs seem, you know, like they're kind of wonky and a bit shady and questionable, and there's, like, specific bits of information that I don't trust or I'm curious about, I then cross-reference with Konzenshu. I, you know, try to bring some level of kind of professionalism, quote-quote, to these reviews, as, you know, professionalizing man-child bitching about a children's cartoon can be. So, I am aware of that line. I read that line. I took that line in. I also kind of rejected that line because it's stupid and it's not a legitimate fucking reason. There is no benefit to them holding back their power because of Hit. And they're really worried about Hit, they would just jump in the arena and then just one-shot everyone in their SSGSS forms until they're ready to fight Hit. That would be it. There wouldn't be, like, a fight. Hell, they would probably go SSGSS against Batamo and then everyone else would be like, forfeit, fuck it, done, not doing this, uh-uh. There is absolutely no benefit to them just using their lower forms, especially if they're worried about Hit, because you'd think they want to conserve as much power as possible. Vegeta expending all these, all this power of his, launching uh, the the Gallic Ho and the Final Flash, and is really burning himself out in these in these previous fights, you know, to not show off his SSG SS form. It, it's completely like an arbitrary, and it's actually going to make him weaker by the time he gets to the fight with Hit. And it doesn't even matter because he shows off his SSDSS form to Kaba. So, he's aware of it now. And also, Hit can't sense God Key, or he shouldn't be able to sense God Key. So, he wouldn't even know how fucking strong these forms are. It's dumb. The whole thing was dumb. It's a bad fucking... Like, you know, they're giving you an explanation. It's... Well, actually, it's more like they're pretending that they're giving you an, an explanation. It's not a fucking explanation. Goku might have well have gone like, well, Vegeta, why are you holding back? And then go, oh, yeah, I think it's going to rain too. Good point, Vegeta. There's no fucking connection there. Like, it, it, it raining and them not using their forms, there's no connection. Just like there's no connection between them being worried about hit and them holding back their fucking forms. And not going all out. It's pointless. It really, really was. Okay, now that I got that little rant out of my system, oh my god, this episode was so good. It was so fucking awesome. Oh, this is this was just satisfying. This is what I wish this series could be all the goddamn time. Okay, so we have Cabo fight, fighting Vegeta, and then, you know, they're, they're pretty much on par. And Vegeta's just like, okay, let's just transform the Super Saiyans. And he goes, oh, is that that thing you did before with the blonde hair? I, I can't do that. And he goes... What? And he's like, yeah, can you teach me how to do that? And Vegeta just fucking snaps and beats the shit out of him, saying how he's gonna fucking, like, kill him and his family, and he's gonna, uh, fucking kill, or he's gonna wipe out, uh, Plant Salad, and, you know, for him being such a fucking pussy and a disgrace to the Saiyan race, and fucking Kaba snaps and goes Super Saiyan, and then you find out it's all part of Vegeta's big plan to, like, kind of, you know, train him and push him further, you know, to unlock that form for him while also still trying to keep up his Vegeta badassery in his own little Vegeta way. Yes, love that. That shit was great. And then, you know, Vegeta's just like, oh yeah, like, you know, congratulations to you. Like, like that, that feeling? Remember that feeling. That is how you become a Super Saiyan. You know, you've got this now. Also, here's the latest form. And then he just one-shots him and just drops him like a bad habit. Um, yeah, that was... Yeah, that was great. Um, like, like everything about this whole this whole episode was pretty much awesome. Like, I have a few things to mention, but they're not a few negatives, but they're really more personal gripes than there are actual flaws against the episode. But first off, though, let me just say, uh, like the animation on in this episode was fucking great. It was completely on point. It looked great. Um, I noticed that from the very beginning of the episode, like as soon as it starts, like I see like you know Bulma. Um, like, you know, wiping the sweat off of Vegeta's face. It's like, you know, the, the extra little details and shading and lighting and just, like, the more finer detailed line work. I was just like, oh, wow, this is a really sharp-looking episode. And then the fight start and just the animation was really fluid. 
and it had really great framing for like some of the keyframes, and it was just it was good. It had nice dynamic action sequences with fantastic choreography. Uh, I think like the big standout moment is um, uh, Vegeta like uh, like tripping up Kaba and going to attack him, and instead like Kaba does like this capoeira thing, spins around like trips Vegeta up and then kicks him into the air. It was just it was great. Like and there was such ferocity to this fight. There was just this is just a good old fashioned DBZ fight. This is probably like the best fight scene uh, I've seen in this series since episode eleven, where like Goku and Vegeta were, or not Goku, uh, Goku and Beers were like throwing out super moves left and right and just being total badasses. And this, you know, didn't have super moves in it, but it had just some fantastic choreography. It had really good tension to the fight, even though it was super short. And this, people, is how you do a short fight. You know, you add a lot of ferocity to it. You, you know, have some engaging visuals. You know, give some a uh, little bit of emotional payoff if you can. You know, this is why, like, you know, seriously, go back, watch this fight, and then go back and watch the uh, Goku Frost fight, and still try to tell me the Goku Frost Frost fight was a good fight. No, this is a good fight. This is a great fight. This is a fucking phenomenal fight for being as short as it is. This is how you do a good short fight. You know, the Frost fight being short wasn't its issue. The Frost fight being fucking absolute garbage, that's what its fucking problem was. Like, this is the shit that great Dragon Ball fights are made of. And it's not just, like, the animation or the art or the choreography, but there was also, like, little just flourishes in the animation that I liked. Uh, one of uh, my favorite scenes, probably my favorite scene in the entire episode, is just when he grabs Kaba by the shirt, and you see, like, a front view of, you know, of Vegeta's face and, you know, his fist in frame holding up his shirt. And uh, Vegeta's fist with Kaba's shirt is in focus and his face is out of focus. And then the focus switches where his fist is now out of focus and his face is in focus and his eyes are all shaded over dark. And then they add to that later on where he goes to charge his attack and, like, there's this gold... This is, um golden highlight, you know, glow over, like, the side of his face from his attack charging. You know, that was really well done. That was very uh, cinematic. It, it was nice. And, you know, things like that aren't exactly uh, uncommon in anime. You know, like, a, like you know, great animators do shit like this all the time, but Dragon Ball has suffered quite a lot, especially Super suffered quite a lot, and these little flourishes are not common in this series. So, like, when I see them, they stick out, and they're really, really goddamn appreciated. It's a level of detail and effort that shows that the people who are working on this episode actually gave a damn about putting in some great presentation. And it just, it worked. They fucking nailed it. It was great. Um, something else, else they really nailed, though, is just the, the nice emotional satisfaction and catharsis by the end of the fight, where... You know, Vegeta goes and, like, you know, dumps water on Cab after one-shotting him. And Cab says that, like, you know, he's going to train really hard and get just as strong as him. And Vegeta's like, no, surpass me. Like, that was a great line. And then Vegeta also followed it up with, like, though I'm not actually going to fall behind. But I like that idea of, like, you know, Vegeta doesn't literally want Cab to surpass him. But, you know, he wants him to work towards that goal. To, you know, set Vegeta as a marker and for him to strive towards greater things. Because it's, you know, striving for, you know, you know keeping up with Goku that's motivated him. And yeah, this is still part of that whole backpedaling of Vegeta's character from uh, the Majin Buu arc. But at least, you know, they're building on what Vegeta's character had been prior to that. And they're giving him this motivation and kind of, you know, working with what they have. And I really, really like that. So overall, like everything that they were doing, they pretty much knocked it out of the park. It was fantastic. It was this is top five favorite episodes, <laughs> without a doubt, uh, of this series. Loved it. It was great. Um, though it's definitely not flawless. And let me just get into a few minor nitpicks I have. Uh, first thing I want to bring up is the whole Kappa not being able to transform, but then Vegeta is able to force him to transform. It's just like. I think it really undermines the Super Saiyan transformation to just be like, oh yeah, like I pissed him off and now he's able to transform. It's like, okay, well, you gonna tell me that the entire Saiyan race of Universe 6 are so big of pussies that none of them have ever been forced to transform into a Super Saiyan before? Like, no one has ever had the motivation and rage. I mean, the in Dragon Ball Z, you know, we've had like, what, there's like five Saiyans on the fucking planet and all of them have this transformation, yet in Universe 6... 
we have an entire fucking planet, yet not a single one in their entire history. They don't even have the legend of the Super Saiyan. It's just nothing. Like, I get that they're saviors and that they're good guys. Good guys get angry. Goku is a, quote, good guy, and he got angry enough to become a Super Saiyan without even knowing really about the Super Saiyan legend or what any of that entailed. So the fact that no one in his history has been able to achieve this, and now Kaba has been able to, uh, it's just, it's weird, and he does it so easily. You know, also I'm a little disappointed, and this is more just my own personal issue here, is that I kind of wish that the Super Saiyan transformation looked different. Yeah, you know, because these are different science. These are science that have lived on our home planet, that have had a different evolutionary path, and having them have their own unique transformation stylistically would have been nice. Even if it was just like, oh, well now he has like green hair instead, or like orange hair, or fucking purple hair. I don't give a shit. Just something. You know, maybe kind of Uzaru hybrid, kind of in the vein of Super Saiyan 4. Just something that gave it its own unique flair. You know, something that made Kaba special. You know, because I really like the idea of, you know, Universe 6 science being able to have forms that Goku and Vegeta just can't have. Because I really like Goku, Goku and Vegeta just to be cut off from a fucking transformation for once. Because considering every transformation in existence, they just get to fucking have. So, but you know, that's just my own personal desires and me imprinting that on the show. And once again, that isn't uh, a mark against the episode. Well, you know, Kaba's unique form isn't a mark against the episode. I find, you know, him, his whole history not having a Super Saiyan form at all is a bit of a mark, but you know, that's just more of a mark in the overall storytelling of the series and not so much this episode. So like I said, this episode is still golden. Fantastic. Then there's uh, the barrier being removed and the ring being made bigger. I thought the ring being made bigger, but then like the fact that they removed the barrier, it's just like, oh, well, now it was just a gimmick for the Magetta fight, so that way Magetta seemed more threatening. Alright, okay, I guess that's a thing. You know, that's a little disappointing, you know, because now it just comes off as, yeah, it was just one note gimmick to make uh, Magetta's fight more difficult for Vegeta, and that is the only purpose it saw, uh, it served. So yeah, that was meh. But honestly, like, the most irksome thing in the entire episode had to have been whenever Vegeta, he fucking says it. He says, Super Saiyan Blue, and I cringed. I fucking cringed. It was terrible. Like, I hate that name so much. And there are some people like, well, it's better than Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. It's like, Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, it's a long-ass clusterfuck of a name. It is exactly what that form is. It is a Super Saiyan God funneled through the Super Saiyan transformation. You know, it is what that form is. You know, that is, I think, is totally legit definition and description of that form. Super Saiyan Blue tells you absolutely nothing about this form whatsoever. It just, it's just Super Saiyan Blue. Okay, well, you know, it doesn't tell you that it's a god form, that it uses god key. It doesn't tell you that it's, you know, this advanced form that's beyond all the other transformations prior to it. It's just, it's kind of a meaningless title just because the original name was just fucking long. And I, I hate it. I hate it so goddamn much. And I was really hoping this show would never use it. I was hoping that this show would just never even say the name of the fucking form. Just go the entire show without ever saying it. And then they did say it. And uh, I'm still not going to call it that though. As far as I'm concerned, I'll still say SSGSS until the day I fucking die. Because that sounds a little bit more dignified than Super Saiyan Blue. It is a dumb name. You know, at this point, now I'm just waiting for Super Saiyan Fuchsia. Because, you know, why the fuck not? Blech. But fuck it, enough with the negativity. Great fucking episode. Love the shit out of it. I'm really starting to believe this theory that the Super Staff is a bunch of Vegeta fanboys. Because the Vegeta episodes have really just been rocking it out. And have been like you know, good to fucking great. Like, 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 the scale of quality has just been rising with these episodes, and now, like, the hit episode, you know, I don't know if that's gonna just keep that, that, uh, that trend going, but I'm looking forward to it. Still not, like, giving this series a free pass. Still not getting my hopes up. Like, I want to see the next episode, but I am not excited for it, because every time, I, I'm gonna keep my fucking, like, expectations rock fucking bottom. Because the moment I, like, you know, raise my hopes from, like, a 0 to, like, a 5 or a 6, they give me, like, a 1. And I go, fuck. So, yeah, I'm just keeping my expectations rock bottom. Because I'm sick and tired of this show fucking getting me all pumped and hurting me. Tired of it. 
Still not excited. Still don't trust it. Still don't think it's actually learned its lesson. I think it's just trying to win me over with a couple of good Vegeta episodes. But who knows? Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully it really has changed its ways. Hopefully it won't push me down the stairs again. You know, and everything will be cool. And we can, you know, move on to our happy future together in the trailer park.